Pick up your gear and open your chests. Throw on your armor and head out on a quest. Hey, hey. It's a brand new day. Hello. 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 Welcome. We're here. Um, usually I have time to prepare for the fact that I am the one who has uh, who's in the driver's seat. <laughs> I'm not ready, uh, but we're going to do this anyway. Um, but since I happen to be top left, it's going to be really easy for us to go clockwise and do introductions. So uh, I'm going to pass it immediately to Masood. Hello, I'm Masood. Uh, I play Gazric Nomrad, our everyone's favorite businessman, socialist, druid construct, and our pronouns are he, him. You gotta add golem to the end of that now. Go no, that's the construct now. It's a golem oh. construct. See, I always thought it was like a construct, like a thought construct. But Seriously, not. I thought it was like a social it is, construct. It is, and now, <laughs> now, now it's now a literal it's one. Now yeah. it's a, everything's already a social construct. What is Gazric, you know? All right, Sharif. <laughs> uh, hey, everybody. I'm Sharif. Uh, he, him, be playing Shaka, uh, Tiefling Celestial Warlock. Also, he, him. What is Shaka? Right. Who is Shaka? Where is Shaka? Love all these existential questions Shaka. five minutes into stream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Eugenio. Hi, everybody. I'm Eugenio. I'm DM Jazzians. I use he, him pronouns. I'm playing Kent, our Phantom Rogue Tiefling. Uh, he also uses he, him pronouns. And Kent is a damn party. Oh, I was no, existential I, dread about it. All. I mean, not for Ken, for me, certainly, yeah, yeah. but not yeah. for Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. Hi, I'm Brian. Uh, my pronouns are he, they. I'm praying Virgil, your Asimar storm sorcerer. Virgil's pronouns are he, him, and Virgil is also a delight. Okay. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, Listen, we fantasize in these games. We are fully rested after eight hours of sleep, and we aren't sitting with tons and tons of existential dread on our shoulders. Look, I'm not I'm, I'm not doubting it. I'm not <laughs> saying anything else. Can <laughs> <laughs> oh, you please say something? I was going to let you. I was going to let this ride out. Hi, I'm Tanya Sacrotier. I am your... Paladin, Ranger with a Scotia or Barbarian, a la John Wick. Uh, both Sleece's pronouns and mine are she, her, and I'm a whole problem. <laughs> uh, and I am, uh, for this episode, your Dungeon Master, Latija Keese, 
whose pronouns are she, her. I play Dahani, whose pronouns are also she, her, and I am here. <laughs> but what is Dahani? Uh, Dahani is also here. Wow. Um, hey, that's us. We're the rivals. Woohoo. Thanks, everybody. Um, it's been great. It's been great. We're going to have, mm -hmm. well, who are you, who are you rating? Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, how, run of show. How does it go? Uh, Sharif, some ad reads. Ad reads. Take it away. Yeah. Please. All right. So let's shout out people that have been helping us some through all fifteen seasons. So we've been going for a bit. Uh, let's start out with D and D Beyond. Um, we have all our character sheets digitized, so we can look up uh, spells and attacks and uh, manage encounters. Look at dice rolls. L look at my wonderful dice rolls from last session that everyone can laugh at. It's great. Um, and you can also access a bunch of uh, source book content as well um, for all of the uh, officially like released books uh, from uh, Wansi and stuff. So uh, check them out at dndbeyond.com. And we will have a giveaway for a player's bundle this week. Um, so if you're, if you're watching live in the chat, uh, make sure to look out for the uh, entry time to the raffle. There'll be an awesome keyword as usual. Make sure to type that in so that you get an entry um you have to be here to win so make sure to stick around um and uh yeah check out check them out at dndbeyond.com literally, literally been here since uh the beginning um so they're awesome um also proud to be sponsored by die hard dice uh check them out at dieharddice.com use the code rivals there for 10 percent off of your dice order um if you want some geeky gear and other stuff to hang out around your house um, as as well as if you w w want Latia's dice as well, um, you can get that from Die Hard Dice. But if you want other geeky gear, check out Stormcrow at shop.stormcrow.com. Uh, you can use the code Rivals for fifteen percent off and get access to like Masood's entire kitchenware. Me, you know, entire kitchen has been uploaded to Stormcrow. Um, just place an order. Can't guarantee it'll be clean or not. Uh, we don't know how often like things are going fast already though Sharif let me uh, tell you what I've lost the exhaust over my oven like that that like it was the first thing to go oh, appliances and I, too oh, appliances too. you said everything why is your fan I, hood on Stormcrow why, why is your fan hood on Stormcrow what is that about I have a very bad warlock contract okay, <laughs> okay uh, fair. It, it is fair. tough <laughs> <laughs> I got I all get, right. I get it. I get it. But Stormcrow's uh, great. They're they're somehow connected. No, somehow. I don't know how. I didn't read it very well, if you can imagine. Um <laughs> no, it was it was it was it was just like a big Eula. You were just like, yes, 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 yes. Absolutely, absolutely. For the mustache, it. what a good deal, right? I get it. <laughs> um, and uh if you want to sound oh so silky smooth like the rivals crew, check out blue microphones crew.bluemike.com slash rivals um as you as you as you're hitting your show and uh we rock with uh blue mic here so if if uh you want to make sure that you look good and you sound good on on your shows check out all of the um hardware and software that they have there as well and if you use that link uh we will get some credit for the purchase as well um and uh make sure to check out idle champions by codename entertainment it's a video game that we all have characters and all the characters that you will see on this show um, are in the game, um, which is a fun, as well as other familiars like Disco, Pest, and Fenris. Um, and, and, and we have a bunch of folks that we all rock with from other shows such as Black Dice Society. Um, Tanya might have more than one character in <laughs> the Idol <laughs> Champions. Um, so like if you want to play with, uh, you know, multiple tanya you can uh you know and that's pretty dope um and uh if if you have all the all the rivals on your team you will get some stacking multipliers so make sure to check that out as well and um i think the most recent uh rivals likely i think is a skin for gazrick uh where he's 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 a nice little chef uh that chef gazrick man He's doing yeah. great. He's raining down a, a nice ice spider stew on people. Oh, you know, it's a good time. <laughs> it's fun that they're taking these uh, skins and and now making things that are utter fantasies that could never really come true. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, Wait until you see the end of this episode, y'all. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> what? Do you know something I don't? <laughs> no, just I'm gonna make. That's the decision I'm gonna make the moment you ask me what I want to do. Yeah. Wow. Apparently. 
This, this is oh, why I the golem. This is why the golem is needed. This is the power that is required. <laughs> I know, like, like there used to be that eternal weather storm over Chalt. Now it's just an eternal <laughs> raining of ice spiders. They're going to develop yeah, a taste I mean, for it now. It's going to be a whole. Already, it's going to be a whole thing now. They're already prepared. It's cooked. It is literally the worst plague. <laughs> it's like cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Just it's like Prince spiders. of Egypt's plague song remix. <laughs> I send ice spiders from the sky. I do not know how they got there. <laughs> That's sweet. And that somehow were our ads. Uh, somehow. somehow. Yeah. Incredible. Oh, you know what? I guess it comes back to me then. Uh, you know what? I'm the dungeon master. I'm going to pass my whoosh. And I'm going to roll a d6 to see who d- gets it. All the pressure. What number are you? I'm one. Okay. She rerolls it's- once. <laughs> I do re-roll ones, but I also re-roll threes because that's Sharif and he just did the ad reads. Oh. <laughs> so roll a d4. <laughs> wow, that's math. I can't. I can't. I don't have a d4 here. Ah, I, just, I okay. only well, have d6s. Then, then, okay. uh, it's, it's Brian. <laughs> I have a hat around. <laughs> no, the power has gotten to him. Yes. All right. Um... So, yes, everyone, stretch it out. Get your whooshing apparatus ready. Those of you in chat who are subscribers, please prepare your whoosh emotes to get going as we all prepare to whoosh. I don't have a hat. I don't have, actually, no, because yes. I'll throw, I'll throw that at the head. camera. You'll and throw it, please don't. Bad. Yeah, don't. Much, man. It's like the Wiimote days of destroying TVs. <laughs> would be a great clip, though. <laughs> yeah, it would be. <laughs> oh, goodness. <clears throat> Previously on Rivals of Waterdeep. Whoosh. There they go. Look at them go all the Are way. You sure, that's the first time that I've whooshed and not done the whoosh. Yeah. Very bassy you know whoosh. I was in. I know it was really good. We all kind of boo. It was that it, like, just that TV episode previously thing. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. well, we followed your lead. What can I say? Yeah, no, it's great. So. I like it. A little Dragon Ball Z energy of like previously mm-hmm. on Rivals of Water. Exactly. <laughs> all right, everybody. What happened two weeks ago? Everybody get your document out. No, I was just going to say, well, go back to the document, now, um, and then I will tell you. <laughs> As my document, you mean our incredible memory. That, yeah, 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 yeah. Your brain or my mental palace document. Yes, that's it, exactly. <laughs> uh, just reading here, it doesn't, says that in the document. Um, <laughs> we've done 117 episodes, 57 episodes. I don't know why we're pretending, 47, I don't know why we're pretending that we remember anything from week to week. Um, so we started last week, I believe, with Kenton Virgil. Um, and, uh, the TLDR is that we kind of decided that maybe Lairn, uh, needed to get away from the fam like, like Virgil did. Mm-hmm. And so perhaps Lairn should come back to Waterdeep with us. Um, Kent and Virgil also had a conversation about the soul trinkets and <laughs> honestly, interestingly enough, didn't really go in depth about it it was it was just like this is a thing that's happening uh i've got it under control virgil does not believe he has it under control at all neither does kent but you know sometimes you have to drop stuff and um and we figure just like everything else we'll go back home and make it water deep's problem that's right (laughs) (laughs) don't don't tell laryl Don't tell um, but yeah, we also yeah, yeah, Virgil gave Bert, Virgil had the talk the heart to heart with Laren and was like, then just leave and don't be here and we'll leave your dad a note eventually. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it does also bear uh reminding us that apparently after we get to Waterdeep with Laren, uh we send Laren off to um uh, work for the biddies, uh as presumably some sort of character building exercise. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's a little shit. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right, who else? Uh, I'll go next because... Uh, for reasons. For reasons. Uh, so Dahani had a, a beak-to-beak talk with, with Walt Hare about, um, you know, setting expectations and mm-hmm. following your dreams and following your own dreams and not somebody else's dreams and making your own choices and Basically, what that boiled down to was that uh, Walter is going to try and take down the establishment. Yeah. 
I think yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. I think that right. the math checks out. I mean, to be cor- to be fair, it was, hey, we shouldn't bully those who have less power than us, and there's a degree that which we should do. And the idea of doing the right thing is really about empowering those uh, who don't have control and holding those unaccountable accountable. And he naturally arrived at the conclusion of the last words, right? That, that that's a easily. very, very mm. thought out way to, okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, go ahead. Please. I, I, I was going to say uh, a little bit about uh, Gosrick. I was going to say uh, we found out he is still trying to understand a little bit about himself and sort of the world in which he operates. Uh, he's, the amount of power that he's gained and the abilities that he's sort of uh, been able to manifest with the help of the rivals is uh, something that has given him a more distant perspective, I think. Uh, and I uh, wanting to elaborate on that and sort of settle in on it. Um, he's decided to just occasionally put his fares in order and. Instead of going on sabbatical or vacationing, he just turns back into a construct. He turns back into a golem uh, outside of Waterdeep, kind of sitting on an o- a hill that is uh, underneath him, slowly risen to overlook the city. And and your best friends with a squirrel. Right? I'm best friends with a squirrel, mm-hmm. Kevin. Squirrel. Mm-hmm. Good old Kevin. Good old Kevin. Yeah. Good yeah, old and- Kevin. Yeah, and for, and for Shaka, like we kind of went into the future. Shaka mm-hmm. was kind of um, older, surrounded by his family, still rocking the puzzle shop, you know, uh, <laughs> and regaling them with tales um, of how he courted mm-hmm. uh, his uh, his uh, now wife, uh, Dara. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. They all went and see which was day. no, like, which was my favorite part of the episode. Mm-hmm. Let's be real. It's- it, it, it was, was pretty, it was pretty, it was pretty, I, it, it couldn't have gotten any better. Yeah. <laughs> it couldn't have gotten any better if we planned it. That's yeah. very, uh, yeah, pretty sweet. Oh, and then all of us mm-hmm. encountered a street preacher. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Who thought that he could, um, I'm sorry, I'm watching El Genio and Brian fight the Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> uh who just who, who thought that he could come into water deep and like peddle his terrible charlatan ways and wares um not kind of knowing exactly what we had been up to for the last couple of years uh in rehabilitating water deep and just kind of making it a really cool place to be and so we promptly through a series of really good roles and really bad roles from all of us mm-hmm. uh kind of basically turned him out of town for now um, i think yeah i think reinforcing that like we actually had been doing stuff and mm-hmm. um we also made him think that he had been ensorcelled into a cat which is awesome yeah that that was <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, low intelligence and a minor illusion. Apparently, you've just become a cat now. I forgot. Yes. <laughs> lots of lots of cats these last couple these last couple seasons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we uh are we satisfied with that uh with that summary? Can we jump into sometime during the the, the post volcano incident of of rivals? Sure. Seems right. right. Yeah. <laughs> if you missed anything of our recap, go back and watch last slime spot. Yeah. We got, we got the bottom. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we actually begin this episode not with any of us. Hmm. Uh, but several hundred feet beneath water deep. Yes. Say. Um so Yeah, several hundred feet beneath water deep. A small pocket of air in an otherwise solid foundation of city. Because, you know, dimension dooring into the sewers just wouldn't be, wouldn't be petty enough. Let's say <laughs> that. Um, we find 
a certain what is she certain elf um it's kind of sitting there contemplating her situation i mean it's we can't really see her it's dark but she can breathe at least in the in the uh pitch black of the camera screen that we see um her breathing is not rushed it is not frantic um it is calm it is not necessarily calculated um and you hear movement in the darkness and uh Perhaps someone is reaching for something that they thought might be there or is no longer there because Celise has her bag of holding. Um, but she, at the very least, she pulls out, uh, you know, just some stuff from her pocket, like her her artificer's tools or something like that. And um, there is a faint glow in the darkness where her face is very briefly illuminated as some, some sort of magic is imbued in these tools. And were anybody close enough, you could hear the um, sounds of concussive force as uh, she begins to attempt to arcane jolt herself out of this wall. And then we kind of, you know, star wipe up to the surface. Hey, Celise, what you up to? This is, Rob, this is maybe the day after. Um, the day after uh, your interrogation and dimension dooring of Faye. <laughs> Ooh, what am I up to? I might have asked Kent to go shopping with me. Is Kent around? Or yes, still... but give me two seconds to get around so I can finish making this note in our document about what's happening right now. <laughs> I have to keep track of the timelines. Um... No, it's fine. I just didn't know if it that's if that would have a lot. Yeah, I just didn't know if it would have aligned when you were with Virgil. That's why I'm asking. Oh, that's a good question. Well, I'm going to look it up in the timeline. So this is two days after the dimension door. Yeah, uh, this is this is this is a couple of days. Um, okay, it... like a few days after. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Cause... we. It... We so I think we'll the the end make sure. week of the Schult incident, right? So yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Then we're still there. We don't we don't head to Caradune for a couple of months yet. So yes, we're still around. Okay. Uh, because between Kent, normally I would have asked Shaka, but Shaka's dealing with a lot right now. Uh, with uh, you know, the whole beholder and the whole Xanathar thing, and uh, so I asked uh Kent and. You know, for fun, we take Fenris with us. So we are a uh, shopping montage. <laughs> but also chatting. Because Celise, she doesn't feel guilty about what she did, but she's like, <laughs> she's kind of like, mm, I don't know how Tyr's going to feel about this. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Kent is, uh, we've done this before. So Kent is uncharacteristically quiet for the first part, just to see if Celise is going to start this because uh she Kent is just not ready to <laughs> so as you're walking around kind of looking at shops because so, you know this leaves more wanted to hang out than actually shop but sure. she knows that saying let's go shopping will make you go <laughs> uh i mean yeah all right <laughs> well sure. she she feels weird asking because she feels like she kind of not really betrayed the promise she got out of you but she doesn't feel like she did exactly the right thing. All right, fair enough. Um, so she's you all are walking around. She's like, so about yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh I kind of sent her several feet down. Uh okay. Uh and how do we feel about that? And I'm just going to, like, stop and ponder the air for a second of. I'm uh, a little bit vindicated, a little tiny bit. 
bit guilty, maybe mm -hmm. uh, that much. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, she's probably dead. But look okay. at how she triple crossed us. I, I, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I, listen, I'm I'm not here to tell you whether what you did was right or wrong. If you feel okay about it, but well, it's for, the feeling okay about probably murdering her is where I'm kind of. Hmm. Mm hmm. So yeah. So, okay. And you have a better moral compass than I do. <laughs> oh, oh, Celise, you shouldn't say that in public. That's not, it's a, such a low bar here that that is not. Um, <laughs> she's oh, missed by because she's really being honest. And like, I know she is. And Kent <laughs> genuinely wants her to like think more highly of herself. Um, <laughs> she's uh, excited that is Kent. a somewhat low bar. Uh, um, okay. Well. We're going to do our best here. So, okay. I, you know, we are certainly no strangers to um, ending lives. Right. And, I, I, you know, I don't have, I don't have any answers for you. Faye did a lot of really awful things to us, to you. Um, and the truth is, we've killed folks for less. Uh, yeah. Less personal things, anyway. Yeah. So, so you know, I'm, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm, I don't have, I, I don't, you know, I don't think you did the wrong thing. I don't, I don't think that, you know, it's fine. It's all fine. What I think is probably relevant, right, is that. Uh, you feel strongly enough about it still, even a few days later, that you want to keep talking about it, which is which is fine. I mean, it wasn't nothing, but like, okay, I am here always. I am more than happy to like talk through this with you to figure out what it is that you're feeling. If you need to do something about it, if you don't, but. If you're looking for answers that you don't think you have inside of you that I can sort of tease out while teasing you, I think maybe, oh God, Celise, you can't tell anyone I ever said these next words, but like maybe a trip to church is in order. Church? I, I mean, Tears Temple, not like church, you know. But I, I just, uh... you know, I just mean... I'm not fobbing you off on the big guy, right? Mm -hmm. I just think there are two different goals that he and I, oh, he's going to get so mad for me comparing myself to him, but it's fine. Uh, there are like the, the thing that I can accomplish with you and the thing that he can accomplish with you, I think are different. And so, you know. Uh, All right. Well, let me put feels it important. Way. Yeah. I ahead. mean, they're, they're both important. Okay, great. But here now, as my friend, yeah, it's gonna sound weird. I just told you to go to church. It's fine. <laughs> okay, Hosier. Um, <laughs> um, I I worry that it will make me that you and the others may have lost any respect for me. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to. I told you I was gonna. I was gonna tease out answers by teasing you uh, we didn't <laughs> and i don't mean to lake light of it by laughing but i promise you we didn't you know we want what's best for you and we've seen how some of us more than others have some of us have been with you longer but we've seen how betrayal and revenge and vengeance if that's the better word for it you know, we've seen how they prey upon you during, before, after. Yeah. And I don't think, I don't think any of us, well, I'll speak for myself and probably mostly Virgil. We, <laughs> somewhere Virgil just looks around. Um, a disturbance. <laughs> 
it's not about for me, it's not about the decisions that you made, whether you did what I wanted you to or not, whether you did the right thing or not. God knows I haven't. God's no, I don't always. I just want you to be okay with the decisions that you make. And if you aren't okay with them, to learn from them enough to make a different one the next time. I I think I, I've been thinking a lot about, ever since we got back from Chult, about the decisions that we've all been making. And which ones we need to learn from and make different choices next time. I don't have all those answers, but I think that for you is the most important thing right now that I can help with. Do you now, with a little bit of space, feel like it was the right choice? And yes or no is not going to change my feelings about you. But... <laughs> I, no, I just, I just hope that. I hope that the next time, well, hopefully not this exact situation, but some decision about uh, dimension doors and and revenges and all of that. I hope the next time that decision comes around, I, I don't care what decision you make. I just hope that you can make it and be at peace with it. You know. Because that's what yeah. that's what I don't like to see with you is your self doubt and your worry. Um, yeah. Well, seeing as how you're the one that told me to go to temple, <laughs> would you go yeah. with me? Oh, you suggested it. I know. I know. I thought it. I mean, you don't have to. No, no, I'll out. go. Of course I'll go. What's he going to do? Smite me? Probably not, I hope. Right? I'm with her. I mean, Tear is all about righteousness, and I don't know. Whatever. If I get smitten, smoted while we are there, you got to explain it to Virgil. Oh, no, he's not frying me. No, I, I know. That's why I'm... Oh, you mean Virgil's not frying you. Got it. There's a lot of frying going <laughs> on. I don't know. <laughs> Sort of lost track who's smiting whom. I mean, I could smite you if you just want to see what it feels like. I, sh I, you know, I prefer to observe from a distance, take notes, analytical sort of studies, you know. I mean, but my smite won't be as powerful as Tears' smite. <laughs> She's just giving you a hard time because you Oh, oh I, oh, Kent knows, and he's just looking at her. And she just like pats him on the shoulder. Uh, as we sort of walk off towards Tears Temple, uh, Kent sort of uh, somewhat under his breath, although he's perfectly aware that Solis can hear him, goes, "Be getting smitten would be better than going to church, though." <laughs> Don't let him hear you. <laughs> um, I should have been looking at what the title of Tears Temple is because I want to call it the Hall of Justice, and that's not what it is. <laughs> it should Meanwhile, be. at the Hall of Justice. Uh, <laughs> Oh, it is the Hall of Justice. I thought, oh, I was right. I thought it was. <laughs> nice. Ah, oh, sometimes. Get out of here, DC. Sometimes. Okay, Listen, is right here is not right a today. subtle god. Let's yeah. be clear. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any one thing, it's righteousness. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. You guys, uh, you you two make your way to uh, the halls of justice in the castle ward and. As is typical, you are met um, just inside the the doors by um, a, a priest in in you know clerical vestments with the symbol of tear on them, and um, you've been you you too have been in here before, so it's not like they kind of don't know who you are, but also you are rivals, so you get you know nods of greeting, and um, they just kind of let you walk on in. I'm gonna sit back here. I got you from back here. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> He's not gonna smite you. <laughs> I I can feel the energy building. Uh, well just just keep Fenris there. Okay. And listen. Mm. Oh, I should have said this before we walked in here, but you did what you did, and your friends still love you. And if he's worth your time, he will too. So let this be about. What's next? And not about what's happened already. Have a good chat. I'm, I'm going to disassociate with your dog so that I don't forget I'm here. Uh, 
wow. <laughs> I just have this picture of Kent, like, like because even though Fenris doesn't fit in your lap, like you're all doing the villain <laughs> head pat. <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, pretty big by this point. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. He he he's almost a he's almost a full grown dire doggo. Um so I I like I go forward, um leave an offering of a couple gold pieces and uh basically do kind of a sit up kneel on my knees and try to just empty my mind so I can commune with Tyr and see what he has to say because I have a feeling he's not happy with me. <laughs> All right, so uh, you um, you kneel at uh, a pew or wherever, um, and things kind of, you know calming yourself, calming your mind. Um, and at first, it feels like like you don't sense anything. Um, it you know it just kind of feels like it's been a long time since you've done this. You're not sure how Tira's going to feel about this. Um, and then you feel a presence to your right. And there is a person, another person in clerical vestments, um, whose face is, whose whose head is covered and they kneel next to you. I just kind of give like a respectful nod. Because I'm just kind of like, uh, I'm, I'm like praying here. Why are you this close? I don't say anything. I'm just still trying to commune with Tyr. Mm. Does this person say anything to me? Or are they just kind of so like... you're saying you don't wish to speak with me? Oh, it's you. Hello. I didn't realize you had, you know, manifested through your cleric. I find it easier than direct communication. Apparently, when you tell people about that, they think it's odd. Even for your clerics and paladins? I, I don't know if I'm <clears throat> the usual, but we, we speak to people however we wish. I don't know why people find it odd that we would talk directly to you. You share my power, therefore I have some responsibility to watch over you. Oh, I mean the people thinking it's weird you talk to us, not you talking to me. Oh, well... Well, if you if you've been listening, you know why I'm here. Yes. And uh I know we had our chat in the woods about vengeance and all of that, but I might have slipped a little bit with faith. It was my hope after our conversation that perhaps redemption was your path, but I see that this is something you can't let go. I feel better today. Because you have dealt with it in your own way. Yes, but she also wronged other people. She triple-crossed the city. And this is an excuse. It's just... I am certainly not the one to make excuses to. If you wish to make those to yourself, I can't stop you. Oh, I know. I know. And speaking of stopping you, I did try to stop you before. Just to give you a moment to think about what you were going to do. Mm. You did, yes. I and, just... And... Now, you come here to speak to me, or at least hope that I would speak to you after you have made a choice. Mm hmm It may not have been the best choice or the right choice, but I admit it was the choice I made in that moment, yes. As much as I enjoy watching you and your friends, those who love you, I cannot watch you all the time, especially when you perform actions that are hard to observe. 
So, I suppose I... And he pauses. <clears throat> Let's make this more productive. Mm. What, what do you hope to gain by speaking to me today? To see if I have... If I have any hope of actual redemption or if I've broken my oath to you beyond repair. I would be remiss if I didn't say that you have absolutely tested the boundaries. Mm. You have so much potential and so much power. And I would have hoped that through your travels, you would understand a deeper responsibility to those around you. I do. Which is part of why I acted, because, I mean, you can see, you know if I'm lying, there's no point in lying to you. It wasn't just me that she hurt, she could have gotten us all killed. And whether or not she broke my heart, whether or not it broke me, I couldn't stand for her to sit there with no remorse, no feeling. For what she did to us in the city. And yet you and your friends and your city are still fine, regardless of her actions, regardless of everything that has come to pass. Your feelings for her seem such a small part of what has happened. Now are they you... are, yes. So what do you, what was your intent when you cast her away? To get her as far away from us in the city as possible. Out of character, does Celise know, like, did Celise have intent of where she sent Faye or was it just some direction go away? Um, far down as she could, the intent wasn't to kill her, but just mainly for her to be as far from her and Waterdeep as she could. Hmm. So for all she knows, I, I'm, I'm so still out of character based on a, the cold open and B conversations. I think it's more of a, you need to not be near me and my friends. So we're safe versus I want you to die and suffer. Then what I can tell you is you have, for the moment, dealt with your problem. Hmm. However, I somehow sense that's not all. I don't understand. I have no intent of chasing her down. Well, I you asked if her. Mm -hmm. I just wanted her away from us so we could be safe. But you asked about breaking your oath. Do you feel that your actions have resulted in coming close to losing my? Brian does not know the word for gods and paladin relationships, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> favor, power. Favor. Hey, favor. That's it. I was worried that my action would have been seen as a breaking of the oath and the chance you gave me after our break, shall we say. I, in all my time and all I can fathom would find it very difficult to think of you performing an action that would ever cause me to stop loving you. Hmm. However, if you are 
concerned, I would ask that you once again consider yourself, your actions, and your destiny. There is always time to change. There is. Well, I won't be so foolish as to uh, wind up in that predicament again to give another my heart and be in that position, but <laughs> you mock me. No, I I merely know that what you say and perhaps what your heart wants are two different things in this moment. Hmm. Well, that was mainly what I wanted, and thank you for your reassurance. Did you bring the tiefling with you? I did. He's in the back. <laughs> He's afraid you're going to smite him. I can't imagine why. He's great. However, oh. and as the... As the, um, <clears throat> sorry, the cleric near next to you, like, kind of shudders and begins to, like, uh, oh, so, oh, this is, I, so, so, so to, to, oh. to be fair, this is, this is actually like, this was not the cleric who met y'all. This is actually yeah. like, this is tear personified who has right. just like walked up to you. Oh God, yeah, and manifesting as a physical being is so exhausting. Yeah. Such a All right, fine. <laughs> In that case, then yeah, as, as, as tear puts a hand on your shoulder gently mm. i wish for you Celise, to do what is right and what you think is right and recognize when those two are in conflict i mm. will mm. it's I been will. Good to see you again and talk to you. I I may not always be able to turn my attention toward you. There are there are always things that capture my that capture my my gaze, and you are growing so so much into yourself and everything you could be i have nothing but pride that makes her tear up a little bit now before i get too emotional i should let you get back to your friend and as he says that kent the pew you're sitting on rumbles a little bit <clears throat> sorry sorry Sorry. Sorry. Oh, be nice to him. He's my friend. He's the said, one that has kept me from falling further. You are all my favorite ones to watch. And I know you will all do great things. Mm. Even when you perhaps doubt your own path, I don't doubt you. Okay, she's going to hug him. Oh. But oh. He feels like cotton. Uh, okay. We're, okay. We're, we're doing this now. <laughs> um, and as he leans in close, he again mm -hmm. just whispers into Slace's ear, be good. And then vanishes. Mm. Uh, yeah, I was actually going to say like... Um... <laughs> To a response to a question in 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 backstage chat, um, uh -huh. I think you actually look up, uh, Kent, to see Celise kind of hugging the air just briefly. Like she, it looks like she was hugging somebody, and that that person is no longer there. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, Fenris is gonna let out a little a little yap. Uh, seeing Celise seeming to be done and also a little, maybe not sad, but emotional, whatever. Shh, shh. Are you done? Are you good? Can we go? The pew moved. It was bad. 
Uh, yeah, Sleece will walk toward, and you'll notice she is clearly been crying a little bit. Uh, as we walk out, uh, you know, I'll sort of toss Fenris in your direction because, of course, he will snuggle and and all of that good stuff. I now need fan art of Kent throwing a okay. wolf. Uh, shoving, not th- <laughs> anyway. No, no, um, you said throw. I need, I need fan yeah. art. Of okay, Kent just throwing the dire wolf. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, me with my strength of eight. Uh. <laughs> So as we leave, um, Kent says, you know, I I, I didn't really hear uh, his side of the conversation. I assume you had a chat with the the big guy. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I didn't really get to hear much of his side, but I heard a little bit of what you said. Don't worry. Most people didn't. Um. You know, I was thinking, mm. and I, I, you know, I don't want to, I'm going to ask you a question, and I think maybe you can think about the answer for a little while. Why are you a paladin, Celise? And, and I ask because I've seen you do amazing things, good things. And I know you've talked to him before, and I know he loves and supports you, and that's why you're still a paladin, but it kind of tears you up sometimes. And I wonder, I just wonder why, that's all. I mean, I know why I became a paladin. I I know you do, I've I've heard that story, but I think that's not the question. Hmm. Wow, just, just right in the heart? Just, just right here. I, you know, maybe, but, but. Listen, I, I'll say one thing, and then we got to get some this dog some food because he's been gnawing on my ankle for about twenty minutes now. Um. Oh no, not your boots. I, th- it's fine. They're very high quality. He'll never scratch them. Plus, you know, prestigitation. Um, Virgil, not me. I don't. <laughs> I think I, I just want you to think about that, and I want you to know that at least from where I'm sitting. I don't think anybody, the big guy included, would think poorly of you if maybe your time being a paladin has served its purpose. Or better yet, maybe, or maybe, maybe, maybe I don't want to put value on it, but differently, just equally as good, maybe thinking about it will remind you why you're a paladin. Mm-hmm. I just hate to see you so torn up about doing good, doing things for the greater good, because of the nature of your powers. I don't, you know, I'm not here for a religious debate, but I don't know. I see you do good, and I see you get torn up about it, and I wonder if maybe there's another way. That's all. That's good, because the lore part of being a paladin was my worst subject. Uh, Well. (laughs) Stop it. We have to get this dog food. All right, let's let's get the dog go and us some food. (sighs) And uh, yes. Celise just kind of gives you the awkward, like, friend arm across the shoulder. Yeah. Stop it, Fenris! <laughs> and as the three of you make your way uh, to get food and eventually back to Troll Skull Manor, um, we flash forward approximately two-ish months uh, as Kent and Virgil are coming home from Caradun with Lamb. Um, and this is maybe actually a couple of days after, like Laren has definitely been sent off to the biddies at this point. Okay, okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, he got a couple, he got a couple days to like exist at Troll Skull, kind of see what everybody was up to. And then I'm pretty sure y'all were like, look, if you're gonna be here, you gotta work or something. Here are the biddies. <laughs> yeah. And they they took him in with all the grace of five grandmothers, um, <laughs> complete with cheek pinches and watermelon candies. And I'm um, strawberry candies. Yes. Um, yes. and it is as you two are coming back to Troll Skull Manor that uh duo 
uh, approaches you, Kent, and says, uh, "Excuse me, I got a there's a, uh, there's a there's a package for you. I got a a letter just came." Oh, a package and a letter. What did I yeah, order, Virch? What's here? It's it's like really I can cold. keep up. It's really cold. Really cold. I'll take it upstairs. <laughs> And uh, Duo hands you an envelope and a and a rolled up like vellum piece of parchment that you definitely can tell has something in the middle of it. Uh, yeah. And it's... on the and on the envelope are in a very uh, gorgeous script mm. the letters KJ. Okay. Uh, it never occurred to me that I'm a KJ. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to take it upstairs, uh, for reasons and I will open it in our room. Okay. I will ask this question. Is anybody else in the building at this time? And, uh, does anybody else see this happen? You can be wherever you'd like to be. Okay. In living color. I think Gazrick's in the room and just watches Kent leave in a moment and says, like, looking at Virgil, like, what is that? What what do you mean? Like that? Like usually oh, like he's he was, gone now. Virgil didn't even know to like I <clears throat> um I'm sure it's perfectly fine. That didn't look fine, Virgil. No, it did not. If you will excuse me, and Virgil starts heading up towards their room. Yeah. <laughs> Can I'm I, sitting, <laughs> well, go ahead. I was gonna ask, do I notice the temperature difference of that item like it affecting the pocket of air or in any way shape or form uh make a nature check for me okay look a roll a was roll it, oh yeah was it cold to the touch or like it was it was it was cold to the touch um ooh 16 plus 9 25 yeah so so it was cold to the touch and when duo handed it off like you could definitely feel like in the the like foot radius around it there is like there is a definite change in temperature. Hey, Duo, come over here. Let me see your hands. Uh, they're they are a little frosty. And he's and he he hands you uh, um, uh, he like he holds out his his hands and they're, like they're not frost bitten, but they yeah. are cold. <laughs> cold. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was like, oh, buddy, uh, I start warming them up a little bit. Um, okay. Is, that, is this a game? What are we doing? No, no. Just go eat something in the kitchen, okay? Put some <laughs> put some soup in your hands. Um, I turn you, around and say, you know what I mean. Hold a bowl or cup it with your hands. I don't know, do I? I don't know how you eat. It's um, it's too it's too late. I'm dipping my hands in the soup pot. Okay, leave. Make a separate soup pot. Uh, it's also ice spider soup, so it's cold too. Yeah, yeah, it's good spot. Uh, it's fine. No one's gonna eat that. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You don't know. It's a water Davian delicacy. It was in the notes. <laughs> uh, but uh, I just turn around uh, to Virgil and say, hmm, that's um, it's probably magic. Because that, that, uh, that cold um, don't seem natural. And I'm going to leave you with that. I don't want to tell you anything else. Or, or, or I mean, I don't know anything else, but I don't want you to feel like, you know, it's... Uh, you use that information as you need to with your partner. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. But if anything, we can... Throw it out the window, so it won't matter. It won't, it won't affect the manner. I, I hope. I don't know. Like mm -hmm. you know, just I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> and, and, and like Virgil's still like not super talkative, regardless. But he is at a loss for words at this very sudden like, er, mm -hmm. um, and proceeds quickly up towards their room after Kent. Okay, Kent, what are you doing upon immediate arrival into your room? Uh, as soon as I get to the room, I open the package up. Uh, and okay. the letter. Okay. So uh, the letter, um, so how, in what order do you open these things? Oh, good question. Letter first. <laughs> there have okay. been surprises in the past. Letter first. <laughs> <laughs> so letter first, um, you, it, it is absolutely uh, in a very familiar script. 
Um, she begins the letter, Dear Tuck. <laughs> Kent immediately starts crying. Um, and uh, as you read the letter, I didn't write it out, but um, okay. it's it's basically a, a, hi, how are you? Haven't seen you in a while. Miss you much. Um, I hear you're doing some really awesome things. That's great. Um, I miss you. This will help. Uh, but it's like, it's longer and more flowy. And she tells sure. you all about, she tells you all about what she and your, and her and your dad are up to and, um, and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it says, love mom. Uh, I think by the time Virgil gets upstairs, I don't think I've gotten to the package yet. Uh, cause I'm, uh, just like happy tears reading the letter over and over. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so yeah. I'm just, so my back is for sure to the door, uh, clutching the letter, right? And just like the occasional, like, <clears throat> as Virgil walks in. What, what is going on? What is, where are you crying? Um, hold on a second. <laughs> Let's check my character sheet real quick. Does Kent cry? <laughs> yeah, so to say is crying on your character sheet. <laughs> um. No, but what do, I mean now. Uh, so what happens is, uh, wait, do I have this one? Uh, what's it called? Oh no, I, okay, I don't actually have that one. So what happens is, uh, you say that Kent jumps eight feet in the air from a seated position startled by your entrance and then goes incorporeal uh <laughs> and like a little piece of parchment like flutters to the ground and kent zips through the ceiling and then a few seconds later uh slowly like pokes his head through the ceiling uh facing you uh, hey, sorry you, you good i'm i'm good uh yeah hang on let me and i sort of like flip and come back down and re-solidify uh it's it's all good it's uh is is my mom <laughs> um sorry i you didn't and you haven't seen one of these so you didn't know i'm so sorry that was alarming and i apologize <laughs> uh everything is absolutely fine just haven't heard from her in a while uh and it, it was nice to to get this is a lot uh because we don't so much talk about her and dad, and they are different than the Zoar matriarch and patriarch were. Uh, so it's a different. Anyway, it's all good. Should we? Uh, should we see what? And I'll go over and just start. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just happy babbling, yeah. uh, unwrapping the. Yeah, the Virgil's package. piecing some things together. It's like, oh, cold. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> and it's the. <laughs> It's the scroll itself that is the source of the cold. Um, as you oh. um, undo the the twine, there's so there's a there's something in the middle of it. There is a scroll, and then there's another piece of paper around the scroll that has another note. Oh, and okay. It says, and it says, "For your friend, I'm not sure. For your friend, just in case." Um, oh, okay. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> And you unfurl the scroll and from the inside of it, something, um, it's about four inches long. It twangs as it hits the floor. It twang, 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 twang. Um, And slinky. What? (laughs) (laughs) But but it it twangs melodically. Okay, 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 okay. (laughs) In like a B flat. Gotta get to a slinky now. (laughs) Yeah, right? (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tune a slinky. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Virgil, are you looking at as he unwraps this thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah you you recognize that this is immediately. It's a spell scroll. And the thing that just twanged along the floor is a tuning fork. Oh. Huh. This is a spell scroll for plane shift. <laughs> yeah, I thought it might be. Oh. Uh, um, hey, Virgil. Yes. Remember that time that I said it's not you and it's really not me or even them, but like just know that you probably won't really get a chance to meet my parents and that just needs to be okay. Yes. You want to meet my parents? Yes. <laughs> We're actually, just, I'm going to cut that. I was going to say that feels yeah. like a good cut moment. Yeah. Great moment. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh yeah that's great yeah uh thank, yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you for thank you for giving me all that information oh absolutely wow <laughs> yay oh Sharif picked the perfect time to go to the bathroom mm-hmm. um uh we're gonna do another interlude because i have decided what Tahani does like six months uh oh great oh actually it's gonna be like just a, a brief thing um i think six seven months after post chult um Tahani does actually get word from Kier Sabal that there is some unnatural, uh, there are some unnatural anomalies. Like mm-hmm. things are more or less kind of stabilized after the volcano incident, but um, things are a little hinky. Mm-hmm. And uh, being one of the, uh, I guess, fixers of the volcano incident, Dahani. Uh, they they send they send her a message like, hey, can you come see what what's going on here? So I think Dahani's probably gone for about a month. Um six months in, if that doesn't clash with anything else that happened. Sure. I don't think so. That sounds mm-hmm. right. So, yeah. Does Dahani go by themselves? Um yes. Yes, she does. Um she she she, she doesn't so much leave a note, but she does tell everybody. Like everybody is probably present when she gets this note. So I wonder if Walter brings it. No, Walter doesn't bring it. Mm. <laughs> um, he's off doing some, his own thing. He's off doing his own thing. Oh God. Um, no, it's some other Eric Coker messenger who then travels back with her. Mm. Ah. It's not. No, there's 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 an Eric Coker Kevin also. It's not Eric Coker Kevin. A lot it's of somebody Kevins. else. Cool. Yeah, lot, lot, lots of Kevins. It's a common name no matter what plane you're on. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a Kevin in Kenya too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> yes. Seven heads pop out. Right. right. <laughs> uh, okay. We will shift. Uh-huh. Masood. Hmm. Gazric. Uh, would the appropriate thing to say be awakes awakens? He awakens from being. He stops being a golem. He ungolems. Mm-hmm. He becomes a uh, social construct once more. <laughs> this is five years since you started pondering mm-hmm. on the hill. Yeah. How long have you been out this time? I think six months. Um, okay. Kind of put some things in order before I left. Uh, the breaks, uh, you know, as it started, it was like just a week. So to get things in order and then go for a week. And I would go back for like basically then like two months at a time, like sort of keeping it the shift of like two to one or like kind mm-hmm. of keeping that going. Um, and then one time I tried two weeks. Um, just made sure things were in order before I left, like maybe put in a little extra work for that. Um, but honestly, Nimrod's has gone so self-sustaining and the mass lords meeting, honestly, it's not much different whether or not Gazric was there when versus when he's not, um, with as many faces and masked appearances, at least to his knowledge. Um, so he assumed six months would be an okay time to be away. Yeah. And Gosric isn't even aware of the fact that, like, mass lords have been, they've not been vanishing, but sure. something kind of, meetings have not been full lately, yeah. because something of one reason or another has been keeping mass lords out of the meetings. Mm-hmm. We're not quite sure what it is, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, it's worth looking into at some point. Sure. I mean, but that's also people problems. You know what I mean? Like, that's that might not be a Gosric thing to solve anymore. Um, but it's like, oh, people are busy. People always, like, he, he's talking to Kevin as he's, like, sort of walking by back into the city. He says, you know, people get busy. They have meetings. They have uh, engagements, connections that they need to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. People uh, stuff. People I don't stuff. Under- I don't understand people stuff. I'm a squirrel. Yeah. You know, and that's uh, Kevin. I appreciate the candor about it because, frankly, sometimes I don't get the people stuff either. Um, but you know, we'll see what this meeting's like. Maybe there'll be some more folks there. Um, or honestly, I just want to know what's going on back at Troll School. 
like cracks his neck a little bit um like sort of like wanders in um who's there at five years from now yeah who who would still be i'll say a troll skull staple at this point like mm. you you still live in troll skull manner the probably dahani would still yeah. be there sure um um, but, uh, uh, Virgil has just wandered away, so I can speak for both of us. Uh, I think we keep a room at Troll Skull. I I don't. I'm not saying it's a small amount of time because I don't know right now. But yeah. I don't think we're there full time. But I think we yeah. definitely keep a a room there still. Yeah, yeah. Shaka also uh, keeps a room. Mm -hmm. um, he stores a lot of uh, puzzle ideas and stuff. So his room is just like basically a big closet. <laughs> um and he occasionally does come and try to in true gosric fashion mm -hmm. tries to hawk some wares uh at the, oh. <laughs> as well um i go up to the front desk then and um talk to duo or doppel duo or brian or um whoever happens every to be everyone is still there um at least as far as the the duos and and brian um yeah. so uh duo our yeah. our normal our normal duo uh says mm -hmm. oh you, yes duo one duo one like oh oh well welcome back Gazric. Um, hey duo it's good to see you yeah uh you were out for and um, do you know how long you're always out like it's been about like six months yeah i can kind of feel it in my joints a little bit but it's nice uh yeah it's a good stretch um but um uh anything uh i mean obviously i imagine nothing too disastrous happened while i was out you know to wake me up if that's the case uh no uh i mean well, we, i mean i i don't know how i would wake you up because you're rock and it's like i could go and i don't yeah, know if that's, that's, like... that's all you gotta do that's all it takes oh okay cool uh well yeah. uh that's that's great that's really really cool um good to know for if you're about longer than and i need you it's great no things are good things are really good 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 wonderful um Hey, is this one of Shaka's puzzles? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't figure it out uh, at I, all. Can I try? Is this a roll? What, what do we have to? So, um, <laughs> can I invent a puzzle for you, real quick? Absolutely, of course. Sure. It's, it's not even, it's not even a real puzzle. It's, um, it is a triangular piece of wood okay. with, uh, like I think, ten or fifteen holes in it, and. Every hole but one has a peg. This peg test, okay. Age as old as time. This test. Um, hmm. I actually yeah. do not know how to answer how to solve it. Uh, <laughs> so, so this this would be like this would just be intelligence. Okay, still raw intelligence check. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a saving throw. Let me let me let me just do actual intelligence. Sorry. See, that's about right. That's an eight. Um, so yeah, you get the you get the premise of the of the 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 puzzle. You're supposed to jump over a peg, and you're only supposed to be left with one at yeah. the end. Uh, you you get to about I think five pegs left <laughs> every time. Yeah, Some, uh, one day I got to four. The same. And, yeah, that is disheartening, duo. Um, but okay, I will. Um... I'm gonna go check on everyone else that's here for a little bit. Uh, I like turn around. I see Solis in the like coming out of like the kitchen. I guess I imagine her. Wait, oh yeah, where is Solis in this moment? Uh, that's accurate. She came out of the kitchen. She's and it's almost like an anime moment. It's kind of weird. Like she's not in her armor thing. She's got like a piece of toast in her mouth. Like, yeah. huh? <laughs> ah, Solis. Wait, I'm her. Oh, good to see you. What has it been over here? Just making sure any uh, demons that needed slaying, any celestials needed uh, vanquishing. She's really confused because she like has coffee in one hand and like the uh, like the anime girl of, like toast in the mouth where she was going. She's like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, demons. It, can I have coffee before demons? OK, that makes sense. That's a fair order of business. Where have you been? Oh, you know, the hill is a rock. It's where I've oh, been. Oh, yeah, the, the weird note that the squirrel brought us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Kevin brings a new one every time I go out. He's great. Wait, uh, squirrel yeah. has a name? Yeah, his name's Kevin. And 
you here because he's been on your shoulder this whole time, guys. Yeah. Like, here, yeah, my name's my name's Kevin. I bring a note every. I like. I mean, the notes are getting better. They're, and then all you hear, Salise, and literally everybody else in this uh, building just hears chittering, as Kevin kind of, you know, laments the fact that he does his best to send a note every single time you become a construct. Yeah, Kevin's been really on it. Does and animal like, friendship let me understand them? Um. Or is that me? Like, uh, no, I speak with animals. I was going to say you have speak. Yeah, you have speak. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can speak with animals and, and you hear everything that Kevin is saying. Look, look, you're... At least has a moment of like, it's early, I have toast and coffee and I'm talking to a squirrel. Mm -hmm. Did Can you understand Kevin Gosrick? Yeah. Easily. He, he's very easy to talk to. I mean, the first time we met a uh, little bumping the heads, you know, uh, strong personalities and whatnot. But uh, we we settled. But okay, I was just checking in. Now it's coming back. Um, I was probably going to take a stroll. Um, see how the meetings have been, I guess. I don't know. I just seen how Waterdeep's doing and whatever ways it might need uh, help or attention. I'd say at, yes. at this, yeah, I'd say at this moment, like you hear some thumps um on the stairway. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. um, and you see Shaka coming down the stairs, backward facing, coming down the stairs, holding this enormous um what can only be described as a large puppet. Um, and he's like slowly coming down the steps where it like bangs on the steps. So he's coming down the steps uh backwards uh you know uh, like he's like, like he's looking down yeah, yeah, yeah. do you okay. need help no 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 i'm i'm good i'm good oh is that gosrick gosrick mm -hmm. what's Absolutely. up man hey buddy it's good to see you i uh gently like thorn whip it over over a series of them just like helping it like move the puppet down so you can walk carefully uh, i had now, it i had it i know is you this shaka is this a like a Zoltar style puppet, like where it's like in a contain, like in a thing, or no, this is more like a, I guess, I guess more like a mannequin, I guess you would say. Got it. Okay. Yeah, okay, more cool. like a mannequin. Okay. Um, uh, I think that Dahani is in the back, like, what is yeah. that? Oh, good. So this is new to everyone. Good. Okay. I, thought, I didn't yeah. want to miss much. Yeah. Yeah. This is a cool, um, this is a, oh, uh, let me uh show you how it works uh and then um so you thorn whipped it like to the it's just like the base of the, against the wall like, or something yeah, okay. yeah, yeah 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 so i like i knock it on the ground basically i knock it on the ground so it's laying uh on the ground uh i press a button and it's uh it's like chest kind of opens up with this weird kind of like swivel <laughs> And then Shaka takes out a bunch of uh, tongs from his uh, from his uh, from his uh, uh, little uh, pack, mm -hmm. and he like says, "Gather around, y'all. Gather around. Gather around, everybody. Okay. Everybody, take a tong." No, what is this? No, I'll bite. I'm curious. What is this? Oh my it's god! Really I know what you just oh. did. It's <laughs> there. It is. There, there it is. is. There it is. What you? <laughs> Well, it's, what you uh, see? Oh, sorry. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just say what you see is as this mannequin's little chest has opened. Yeah, uh, you see several places where I assume organs might go. Yeah, so this is called shockeration, um, and mm -hmm. basically the idea is you want to try to. Um, there's like some in there because it's not finished. Yeah. You want to try to take things out, but you don't want to touch like the sides or like make it a little. Uh, you, you want to take it out as carefully as you can. Oh, let me at this! I'm really good at this. I, I you know, I, I grew up harvesting a lot from the animals and the things around. So um, if you want to try? If you want to try, let's get a dex roll. It. Oh, okay. Or if okay. if you can suggest another kind of role, I'll I'll, I'll do a, it's either survival because I'm, I'm trapping <laughs> like like it's like this is how we survive. It's not a death trap. <laughs> or or I'll do a straight uh, dexterity roll. 
Yeah, I was gonna suggest Dex. That would okay. be funny if I made them survival roles. Yeah. Like you just it's a natural twenty. Oh my gosh. Yeah, well, absolutely absolutely. Tell us how you do this. Oh uh, no, 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 I think I, I um kind of just like whoop, 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 whoop. they just sort of like flip out really quickly. Uh and I put them all in one hand. It's like and that is how it's done. And as I'm doing, I rest the tongs on the inside and it touches the side of the mannequin. <laughs> what happens? Does the mannequin scream? Like what happens when I hit the side? So I request so, so uh it's not done yet. So basically if if you touch it, I scream. No, uh, no. <laughs> that's so much work. This, so much this work. is in the this is look, my workshop is the room. Okay. <laughs> so still still working on it. Yeah. Uh but I will eventually have something uh wired up. So yeah, so I scream and then I yeah. say it'll be something that you know happens. Gosrick just like sets down all the pieces, like what type of self mutilating magic did you put on yourself? Can I <laughs> ask Shaka, do yes. you do you just scream or is there something in the mannequin that makes you scream? I just scream. Um, but the idea, yeah, 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 I, I, I just scream. No, but I, I think you have a hit on your hands in some capacity. Uh, I like kind of dump the pieces back in, uh, to their positions. Wow, uh, this is a wild time six months, and you're up to more inventions. Salise is out of their battle armor, you know, going. Seems like things are running pretty smooth. Hey, Brian, how have things been at Nimrods? How, how are things looking uh, in terms of our developments? Uh, Nimrods is functional as it was when you uh, left six months ago. Um, profits are good. He says a lot of business terms that you understand. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, so we're growing, all good ones. We're growing at the right way to investing in the social entrepreneurs that we want, sort of. Directing change for the betterment. Okay. Uh yeah, I see. This is great. Um wow. And there hasn't been any anybody to like beat up or or like someone after us in the six months. Like it everything's just been calm. Yeah. This is this comes from Dahani, who's yeah. like looking very curiously at this mannequin on the ground. Mm -hmm. She's She's, I mean, to not to, not to be punny at all, but she's completely puzzled by it. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, things are things are are oh good. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh your god! What happened? I just solved the Shaka puzzle. <laughs> you did. You did. I mean, you didn't solve the whole thing. Like, 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 uh, you got one piece. Oh, I, I forgot the funny bone. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, that, 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 that was outside <laughs> the chest cavity. That's on the other side. <laughs> And 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 this isn't a completed puzzle. This is a in the sure. works. No, no, but I like solved, it's, a, solved a prototype. Right, right. When we talk about like the puzzle working, it was like a much further point in the future, right? As opposed to like five years. So I think that that makes sense. Um, yeah, this is big. Yeah. yeah. This seems this seems about right for five years out. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Um, okay, you know, then that's great. That's wonderful. I guess. Um, I don't know. I, I was going to say go back to being a golem for a little bit, but um, I think I might just explore the city or the world and then come back. The world? I don't know. I just got up. I'm going to think about it for a little bit before think, I make... Think, think small before you decide you want to go to elsewhere. Let's start, no. with, the, yeah. start with the city. I think I'll go... I'll, I'll just uh, take a little stroll through the city, see what's different and changed, but... Um, I'll go take a shower uh, and uh, shave. Let me trim up a little bit. Godric's been in uh, ungroomed in six months, yeah. just existing. At, like I don't know if he's we actually more got beard than he's. He's one of those gnome figurines where yeah. all it is is hat, nose, and beard. Absolutely. <laughs> if Tangela was a man, that's Godric <laughs> right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's like, okay, so I'm gonna go clean up a little bit. Uh, and he uh, just goes to uh, leave. Um, you notice a little bit, though, of where he steps. There's a little patch of dirt that almost like is left over under the bottom of his soles. 
and like in mm. it just like something just a little bit sprouts with every step that he's sort of yeah. been taking. Princess Mononoke forest spirit, spiriting mm. it. I yeah. love it. It'd be way cooler if it wasn't in our dining room. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like a garden on <laughs> and Lee pops out and if he didn't smell yeah. like he also hadn't showered in six months. <laughs> uh, Brian actually comes around and um, with some care actually like you see he's got like a like a uh, a trowel or something it's it's yeah. flat um yeah. he actually like scoops up the footprint as whole as he can yeah. and like deposits it somewhere where it can continue to grow um from there the camera like as as we all kind of like as the rivals kind of congregate around this shock oration mm-hmm. and i like that it's Pretty both a, a, a pun for the fact that it's shakas and you probably will get shocked if you right miss um we kind of pan over to it and you kind of see it like kind of from top down and the mannequin itself becomes a drawing as we are now in shaka's puzzle shop Mm -hmm. several several years ago when he was um just thinking this idea up um i've got a question for you shaka I'll say this is right smack in the middle of this. So a year out, you were developing the puzzle shop. Five years out, you are you are developing Shockeration. Three years, right in the middle. How are you feeling about the influx of customers who continue to come to you with solved puzzles and Eldritch Blasts? (laughs) Yeah, um, he's starting to welcome it and expect it Mm -hmm. so he has uh kind of uh redone the logo to the place um he uh kind of puts a little like uh it's it's like still shock is puzzle shop but under it as sort of an underline is a little hand giving like a eldritch blast from so it's like an underline underline. underlines it nice yep um there's like a all are welcome uh thing on there Mm -hmm. um and he's basically set up a separate um area just to handle this so like so like there's like the puzzle shop area um where where like he's a basically hired someone to work that and he's mainly dealing with people that are coming in uh asking questions about what's uh what's going on um and i'd say that he is like he hasn't quite put it all together yet, uh, uh, in terms of uh, you know Xanatharness. Um, but he knows that there's something going on. He's just trying to figure it out. Awesome. Yeah, um, he, he he he's like more into just mentoring people, I guess, just like mm-hmm. making sure that they don't go through a similar experience that he did. Fantastic. Um, on this particular day, it's a slower day for you. There are not a lot of customers for either puzzle or power and um <laughs> and uh you are sitting behind the counter doodling this idea for um for shockeration i'm going to say that i can't believe you're making me say shockeration <laughs> <laughs> every time you say it like that royalty check comes so keep, keep, keep saying it one gold piece every time <laughs> <laughs> um when uh the overhead door the 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 bell overhead uh rings and uh there is a a customer who is kind of wandering like they enter so fast you kind of miss like seeing them come in so you don't have an idea of what they look like um but you can tell that they're tall like you can see the top of their head from like from over the shelves and they just appear to be browsing oh yeah if it's if it's a slow day i'm well, first, I'm going to give them some time because I don't want to be, uh, you know, all up on somebody because I definitely hate mm-hmm. that when I walk into like, I don't know, a sneaker store or something. They're like, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? You know? So, so yeah, I, I try to give them a little bit, but I definitely, I definitely look for tells and I do a little bit of a, of a whistle, I guess. I'm trying to, I'm like at the cashier, just like, well, I can't whistle personally, which is why Shaka <laughs> can whistle. Yeah, sure, uh, of course. Of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like doodling and kind of whistling, just letting it's them know casual. I'm here. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That don't Can we make it so the Zoom share sound? I pulled up a whistle sound effect real quick. <laughs> No. Look, not everyone can whistle, Masood. I can't. Okay. So I got the I got the yeah, share sound. I'm right, it's, I'm right it's, there. It's with... fantasy. It's fantasy. Yeah. We can't whistle in real life, so our fantasy characters can. Exactly. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, no, you actually see this person. Um, uh, you can tell at the very least that they have uh long dark hair, okay. and uh, as you begin to whistle, you see them stop and like their attention kind of turns towards you. Um but they keep looking at what is probably like the beginner puzzles, which are probably like right at the front to get to, to make people not as intimidated. Like, here, you can yeah. do this. You can try this out. And they're just kind of sitting there or yeah, standing that's, there. Rather. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly right. I, I, I got Candyland right in the front. <laughs> um, you know? Um, okay. So yeah, if, if, if I whistle in, I, I, I like kind of notice and like, I like, I say, Hey, if you're new to puzzles, that's a great section. There's some great, uh, great gifts there. Um, just let me know if I can help. Um, and the voice and the, the the person behind the shelf says, "You've already helped so much more than you know." This voice sounds very familiar to you. You haven't heard oh. it in a very long time. Can I roll a history? You may. Yeah, let's do it. Uh... With advantage. All right, I got a fifteen. Yeah. Um, you last heard this voice shortly after your exploits in Nightstone, when you were just kind of reeling from the realization of who your patron was and wow. the loss no of way. your powers. No way. Uh, I'm going to, let me see, what can I can do as a symbol without like screaming out like, like, a, like a crazy person? Uh, I'm going to... No, Shaka is no. This is what Shaka would do. He's going to go over. Mm-hmm. And he's and he's gonna say, "Well, Shaka, don't 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 be creepy, Shaka. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna go over and like say, is is that you?" And standing before you is a tall, slender woman with long dark hair and very kind almond shaped eyes. You are looking into the face of your patron. Kaguya. Oh, yeah, see her. Uh, I'm like, I just kind of, uh, I think Shaka would, uh, I think he would sob. I think he would start sobbing a bit. And I think he would um, just kind of like try to steady himself on the shelf. Because mm -hmm. he's kind of, yeah. and like, he's just like, I, I have so much I want to tell you. I have time. I mean, and she, 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 but well, of, 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 of course, but I would like, I, I would love to hear it from you. And she's, she's got her, she's, she's putting an arm around you to like steady you so that you're not knocking over your own product. And, um, she actually leads you to the back of your, of your, uh, store where, um, the, uh, you know, where you're like, it's, it's, your workshop at the at the store right mm -hmm. you've got storage at at troll skull but you've also got a place at the store where you can uh develop ideas etc cetera, etc cetera. and what what do you what do you tell her i tell her um you know when we were all in avernus um i had no idea that i was gonna find you um, we were just looking to help people that were there, and you uh, seemed like you needed um, help. But then I thought, like, were you there? Did you were you there for another reason? Like, were you intentionally there? Like, it just seemed like it was just I just lost, I just got rid of my patron and ran into you. It almost seems like it was it was meant to be. I don't know if you can share that, but was this? just a coincidence or was this like you want you, you put yourself there 
I think um, she says after some consideration of the question, I think after this many years, I've stopped believing in coincidences. I, I couldn't tell you why I was there, but this happened to be one of the reasons why. And I'm very glad that it was meeting yeah. you and all of your friends and having the opportunity to help you out as I see now you're helping so many people out. Yeah, that's, um, it's been pretty tough. Um, I, there's just a lot of new warlocks out there. I'm not sh quite sure why it's like, I'm not doing anything special with these puzzles or anything. I'm just, this is my passion. And yet it seems that, you know, there's a lot of folks that have these puzzles that tend to develop these powers. And I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to be a good example for them. Um, I'm trying to help them out, but I also want to know like, what the heck is going on? Like, I, I, you're, you're not doing this, are you? Oh no, this isn't me. This is all you. When you defeated the Xanathar, you took that power. You didn't mean like, you didn't take it in a malicious way. Power is not always a corrupting influence. And it's what you do with that power that makes you as a person. And I don't feel that you're intentionally sharing that power through these puzzles, but there is a passion there that you just can't help but share. Do remember hearing a voice on that day but to be honest i mean i was so full of rage and then exhaustion and that i couldn't even i, I couldn't even put it together and now i feel so ridiculous that i couldn't put this together um a puzzle that even shaka couldn't put together and she says it with like all of the kindness and fondness of like a patron who is so proud of you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. This is even more responsibility than I thought. Uh, I get, I mean, I'm not a, obviously this is different from, I'm not a patron uh, or anything, but uh I don't know. I, I guess I need to know. I guess I could use some advice on if I'm I guess I'm responsible for, uh, you know, at least some aspect of these folks lives. Um, do you have any advice on how I should go about that? Should I tell people? Should I try to organize some kind of group? Should I? I mean, well, they kind of all know each other because they see each other around the shop, but I haven't like formally, I guess, you know, done any organization. Please don't look at the Zoom chat, K Kagoya. The <laughs> uh, shenanigans going on there. Um, she like looks off to the side to consider this, and she says, "I think, I mean, obviously." I had no idea what I would end up doing for you and that you would go on to do such fantastic things. And it's a little bit different for you because you kind of know what's happening here and that you are the cause, not negatively. I think you should just see where it goes. Hmm. Like trust in yourself trust in the people who come to you for advice trust in your friends you still have the rivals they're a great group of people should I tell them about this I would just so that it's not weird it gets weird with y'all sometimes I mean they might have heard about it honestly but I haven't formally 
uh, told them just because I'm, I don't know, just just seems like a weird, a strange thing to share. Um, but you've led me to the best possible path on my life. Like you've given me a reason to keep going and you've helped me see through like the lies that um, I guess I can't say the Xanathar anymore because that's what that voice said. It said, it's not just a, it's just a title. Hmm. So I guess it's just, I guess I can't really blame the Xanathar because I, am I the Xanathar? Do I call, am I the Xanathar? Are we the baddies? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I don't know. Um, you know, yeah. One one thing that I have also learned is that you don't have to have all of the answers right away. So that is one thing that you can take some time to figure out. I just can't believe that you're here. I I I can't believe you're here. Um, Hey, you want to check out this doodle that I've been, that I've been uh, working on? Uh, sure. <laughs> um, um, uh, I, yeah, I think we kind of cut back to both of you looking over this doodle um, and you offer, like you telling Kaguya what is, um, what your plans for it are and she offers what help she can. Um, she's not a puzzle master like you are, Shaka. But as we kind of pan out the door, like the view from the from the door outside, uh, you see just about to cross the threshold, a young dwarven cleric. And I think that that's where we're going to cut the episode. Incredible. Amazing. Aw. So now we have an explanation. <laughs> now we have an explanation for why Shocker rolls so bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the understanding. I get, I get it. Yeah. What's God, yeah. what's my explanation? <laughs> You're Gosman. You're okay. Gosman. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. You take the hit for all of us. That's what you thank, do. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Support. Okay. I'm gonna stop playing support on teams. <laughs> How are we feeling, everybody? Feeling good. That was, that was a good. fun episode. That was fun. Very sweet. Um, I'm like gonna go sweet... sit in the corner. Yeah, and real, which is, oh, is really nice. I, I love. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, I'm, I'm trying to think what we should share for the after show. What we should share here. Yeah. But but uh, yeah, it's it's it's, it's just been, I mean this season just great. Like it's yeah. After, after think... doing this for so many episodes, after doing this show for so many episodes, it's cool to have this like wild like you never know what's going to happen kind of episode yeah. by episode thing yeah. great. um so for those of you who uh who don't know I, we can we can make this public because it is public knowledge kaguya uh oh, is yeah. uh shaka's patron who was played by the absolutely wonderful erica ishii at D Live 2019 um but i've got more that's going to wait for the post show cuz oh. i'm so i'm so excited Heck yeah. Um, but uh, we've got time to take questions. Going to beat you to it. No, I no. spelled it wrong. <laughs> I wasn't even uh, my hands. I was, uh, I was just waiting. I was waiting. Oh my god, I can't do it right. I can't do it and DM at it. the same time. No, I've done I'm it. A, I'm gonna do this. Okay. <laughs> rivals question. Rivals question. I, I singular, oh, not rivals question. Right. Or rival rivals question. singular question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and we're gonna take those to answer for you at some point while we go counterclockwise Ooh. and uh do outros while I disappear. Go ahead, Tanya. Wee! Oh, hi, I'm Tanya. Boom, there it is. Cypher Tier. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm streaming later today. And then after that, I start a new job on Monday. So I don't know when I'll be streaming after that. So uh, look for me on the internet. When I do get to stream again, I'll let you know. And uh, that's all I got. Who's next? C'est toi. Oh, crap. Hi. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hi, I am Brian, aka Urban Bohemian, uh, pretty much everywhere except on TikTok, where you got to add that cute little underscore. And I'll be streaming 
uh, this week on my own channel on Tuesday, Saturday, and Sunday. Per usual, I have a few uh, previews and early access things to look at this week. Also, tomorrow evening, I will be on over on uh, Familiar Quest Series 3 at twitch.tv slash cnegames at 8 p.m. Eastern. I feel like I'm going to mess everything up as I say it. Uh, playing uh, my Familiar Disco in Idol Champions, uh, which is DM'd by uh, DM Jazzy Hands and also Alicia Marie, Kelly Butler, Megan Kenrick, and uh, we had a guest, Johnny Stanton, um, who will not be guesting with us because his character's off to enjoy their spot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, I'm uh, back. Oh, Cle back. Clearly, no, I'm, I'm back because I, I could hear you, and clearly I can't walk. A DM cannot walk away for two seconds before <laughs> order is dissolves completely. No, so <laughs> Go ahead, Okenio. Hooray! Hi, everybody. I'm Okenio. Uh, you can find me on the internet at DM Jazzy Hands. Um, what is coming up tomorrow night? Uh, Familiar Quest episode five. I can't believe we're already in the back half of the season. Uh, this is, uh, time is fake. Um, so come and uh, check us out. We say goodbye to, to Johnny and Twiggy, uh, our, our guest stars from the last couple of weeks last week. So we're just back to the core crew. Uh, Red Wizards. I don't know. Come hang out. That's tomorrow night at eight. Um, I hope to finish. Oh, no, I'm not streaming this week because it is uh, is meeting week for me. So I'm not I won't be live on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, so, yeah, Monday for Familiar Quest. And that's a me. Audio. OK, you. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Thank you, Chris Pratt. <laughs> ah. Ouch. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, shock is go. Sharif. Sharif's You're go. up. Oh, is me. Oh, <laughs> I was zoned out. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, you can uh, catch me at SharifJackson.com, S-H-A-R-E-E-F Jackson.com, or Sharif Jackson on all social networks. Um, I guess I don't really have much going on. I moved to a house, so a lot of my stuff has been uh, setting stuff up, as you see my background here. That feels uh, like a lot going on. Yeah. That, that yeah. itself feels like a There's lot. There's a lot going on, plus yeah. AP exams that I tutor for plus college finals oh, cool. uh, classes I'm teaching. So yeah, uh, it's a lot of stuff. So I'm not really having anything else going on streaming wise um, oh. or gaming wise, but um, uh, check me out. Uh, wow. see. I think that leaves me. Hey everyone, I'm Masood. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Rudeboy, M-A-H-R-U-D-E-B-O-I. Um, right now in terms of streaming, I'm just here with the rivals, um, uh, having a good time with it. I'll be back in two weeks. If you are in Chicago, a little update for y'all. I'm going on the main stage tomorrow night uh, with the what? Second City. So if you are free and you want to come see me, come buy a ticket for that and you'll see me get to do live comedy. Um, yeah, I'm sure I just sold it really well in this moment. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, if you're in Chicago and you want to go see it, uh, come check it out. Oh, we'll be uh, doing a show on the main stage there, which is going to be super fun. Um, otherwise, uh, folks who are out in the area, um, Raya, if you've got other campaigns coming up and you're looking for folks, let me know. We can chat about it. But in the meantime, yeah. you can keep me looking. You can keep up with what I'm doing at uh, Instagram and Twitter at Marud Boy. Again, M-A-H-R-U-D-E-B-O-I. And that's me, Latia. I believe it's your turn. It is me. Uh, hi, it's me, Latia. Uh, you can find me everywhere on the internet at Latia G Keys, uh, except where I'm not. Um, catch me on Tuesdays uh, at 2 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Central at twitch.tv slash DD Beyond, where myself, Amy Dallin, and my fellow community manager, Sarah, are uh, talk about stuff. It's it's a grab bag. We, we never know what we're going to talk about until like two days before. So it's, it's, it's fun. Now we've got something really, really exciting coming up uh, this week. So uh, I definitely would like as many people there as possible. So, but I can't talk Ooh. about it yet. Mm. Ooh, that'd be fun. Mm. Yeah. Um, and we did get one question. Oh, let's do it then. We got a bit of time. A whole question, yeah. Um, from Lady Luck, uh, who asks if Brian has started a garden of sprouts from Gosrick. Um, oh. To which the answer to that question is um, yes, they are uh unusual specimens and different every time he wakes up hmm. um it obviously depends on season and uh what he walks on when he comes back but yeah and, and then like <laughs> cut to cut to brian um kind of like right outside troll skull where there's like a tiny the tiniest little greenhouse where it's just like little footprint 
uh, <laughs> shaped uh, patches of of various like flowers and and moss and mushrooms and all sorts of different stuff. It's cool. I love that. He has a literal footprint garden. That's so cute. Yeah, footprint garden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's cute. Um, but I think that's gonna do us for yeah. this week. Um, yes, uh, we would also like to <laughs> mm -hmm. oh wait, we got one more question coming through. Uh oh. sorry. <laughs> oh. Break, breaking oh. news. We've got one one more question coming through the airwaves. Uh, oh. from Omnis X who asks. Uh, is Tyr looking for new clerics that might also be rogues? Hmm. We now cut to Tyr in the uh, astral plane. Huh. A cleric that's a rogue. Huh. Somewhere Kent is dumping all of his levels of rogue to just be a bard at this point. <laughs> he thinks there's a disturbance in the cosmic religious force and he's like, uh-uh, not me. Not today. <laughs> no! Here's that too, and it's awful. <laughs> Probably not, but it is very fun to tease him. Kent is like melting down his thieves' tools. No. Wow. Get out of here. <laughs> then Celise just starts sliding you pamphlets about tears. Right. There's a Tear potluck this Sunday you. after service. Like <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, now we have to do that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> every 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 third day at the Halls of Justice. Oh god. god. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Three um, more of these, y'all. We're gonna start to tie stuff together. No, we're and, going uh, forever. Nope. I we're going forever. I know, I know, I know. But it's very exciting and, and it's interesting because oh. I uh I try to keep notes throughout the sessions. Uh, yeah. And I just want you all to know that consciously or not, there are like a couple of moments in these timelines that we're really focusing pretty hard on. And I think it's really interesting how we are shaping this story. So I'm looking forward to seeing the next, the next few weeks, see how this goes. Um, that's all. Oh my gosh. Now we've got oh. <laughs> tier, tier seminars are happening in Twitch chat. Oh, <laughs> send, send, us, send us on Twitter your best yes. title for a tier yes. tract Absolutely. and or pamphlet. Yes. Oh my tier tract. Yes. I yes, love yes, tract. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I have canva at my fingertips and a passion for design. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Um, as usual, we would love to thank all of our Indiegogo supporters for making this final season possible. We truly couldn't. Oh my God, Chris! No, we truly couldn't oh. have done it without your this. <laughs> I feel I'm bad sorry. that I even let that happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for your support. You will see a brief screen that shows all of our Indiegogo supporters at the end of this stream. We are going to go now and raid Kelly, aka the Opera Geek, whose birthday is today. And oh my God, it's happening. And she's yeah. tweeting, uh, she's tweeting, she's streaming the Civ 6, it looks like. And raising money for And Swallow. raising money. Yes, I literally just tuned in to see what was going on. So yes, uh, Civ 6 and raising money for Salal. So give uh, Kelly all of your best wishes. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Uh, remember, we're bi-weekly, so we will not see you next week, but the week after. And we love you all so much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, y'all.